Hi, I'm Joji B and welcome to Joe on the Go. So we're gonna start this again. again. <laughs> <laughs> this could be very long yes. journey. Today I am here with the wonderful Monsieur Gavin McLeod Valentine. Celebrity skincare facialist, and he's also ambassador for Intraceuticals, which is a fabulous skincare range, which I really think amazing treatments, which I'm sure we'll hear a bit more about. But this gentleman um, is based LA, New York, London, flying all over the place. Well, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Love it. So we're going to find out from Gavin um, what his red carpet skincare prep must have is because let's face it we all want to look like we look like that every single day but that doesn't happen but this guy it has all the insights as to what he does on lots of celebrities are you allowed to name names yeah i mean i'm very excited to have a, a number of clients who are very special so i work very often with alice and janney who won the academy oh, award last yeah. year with amanda seyfried mm -hmm. michelle williams kim kardashian west uh julianne moore uh, Deborah Messing. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Oh, a few redheads in there. Quite I love redheads. That Susan one. Sarandon. Just, she's what I must oh mention God, her. I love her. She wakes up my political brain oh. and we talk about all sort oh of egregious God. activity in yeah. US and UK Clever politics. Clever lady. Oh my God. Brilliant woman. And Helena Bonham Carter. Who I just love. And she's everything you want her to be and nothing that you fear that she might be. Oh. Do you know what I mean? She's just a dream. So I would have thought, personally, if, well, I remember when we first met, it was like, I hadn't met um, Gavin before at all and it was like ah, it was like just such joy and I think quite often when you must be surrounded by people all the time to actually then have somebody so genuine and mm. effervescent and lively because there's so many sort of sycophants but I think also, yeah, I think you're right. I think when someone is very real with them mm. and someone, you know, I'm not someone who puts anybody on a pedestal and mm. I don't go and sort of trepidatious and please like me. I'm more like, da, 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 move your face, you know, <laughs> and there's something refreshing <laughs> about that. I always finish with my signature uh, slap as I think you experience. That must be fun. Yeah. It's always fun depending on how the client is. And how hard But I go. really am very lucky to have a dynamic group of impactful, powerful women and men who know who they are. Mm. And so it's, I'm not sort of subjected to the sort of frivolous mentality of um, getting panicked for the red carpet. They're, mm. they're pros, they've mm. done this before. And we have mind engaging chats. Mm. It's not just about like a little gossip here and there. It's yeah. really about what are you doing? And they start to invest in my life and I invest in theirs. And mm. that's where I think this wonderful sort of great area where I live, mm. where their client and their pseudo friend it, it's a lovely sort of balanced experience to be had. Yeah, no, I can imagine. And so also, I mean, you know, immediately they relax in your company. So then you get the best of both worlds. Well, I was being terribly Los Angeles and I just recently moved there so I can say this. I was hiking Runyon Canyon. <laughs> I just consumed an avocado toast and had an oat milk latte. And I think I might've had some food that I had done yoga beforehand, but the food, not me. And um, I was talking with this guy who's called the personal giant mm. and he's a healer and a sort of um, a wellness holistic doctor. And I was, sort of walking up the, the hill and he was gasping for air and I was thinking, oh, hurry up, because I'm a New Yorker as I walk. <laughs> and he said, you know, I've been thinking about something because I was sort of had this sort of, almost like I'm not, what does it mean to be a facialist? Or what does it mean to be a beautician or a, a therapist at some point? Because I've always thought that this is almost an extension of something, mm. not the full mm. part. Mm. And he said, you know what, you're a healer. Because when you think about it, when you're in the room with these people, especially on sort of a war day or an event day when they're getting ready, I have the last hour yeah. that is theirs. Yeah. And so the energy that I bring to that space, the conversation we have mm. is going to change their experience for the rest of that night. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so the makeup artist comes in. And you know, that's a fun experience. And the hairdresser comes in and it's all pulling and blow dryers and brushes. Mm. And then the stylist comes in with her assistant and they're sticking the dresses and pinning them in place. And then the car arrives and they get thrown in and boom, they're on the carpet and pose. Mm. And the pressure to be who we as a public expect them to be mm. is 
enormous. Yeah. So if I go and I ground them and center them in that quiet space, mm -hmm. but I also have to energize them. I have to lift up the energy in the room so they can go out there and perform. Mm -hmm. If I go in and play, you know, Celine Dion or Pan Pipes, <laughs> they're just going to go, but I can't do that. I've got to get them invigorated yeah. and ready to, to be exactly the pressure that they feel to yeah. meet that challenge. So what, what's your tip? What do you do? So I you know what you do. I don't know what I do. I think I just go in mm. and I, like I said, I don't sort of fluff around. I mm. sit down and say, we're going to give you this treatment. And then I ask them about it. I say, mm. where are we going? What are we doing? What's the intention behind it? Mm. If you get interviewed, what is it that you want to say? Is there anything you want to get across? What was interesting last year in Time's Up Me Too mm. um, for the Golden Globes, there was a lot of actors and actresses who were very nervous about to answer that question. Yeah. So we would do a lot of role play back and forth. Okay. Well, what would you think about that? So with Alice and Janney, you know, she played CJ in the West Wing. Yeah. He was uh, head of uh, communications for the White House. I said, well, what are you going to answer when they, do they ask you questions? What would CJ do about what's going on politically mm. right now? Mm. And she thought, they're going to ask me that question, aren't they? I said, I think they will. <laughs> we should role play it. You know, so it went back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. And so sometimes it's prepping them for that. And sometimes it's just giving them a space mm. to feel okay. normal. Okay. I am. I'm coaching yeah. them. Oh my God. They're one. nobody until they've met me. <laughs> yeah. You're still Jenny from the block. No, I'm joking. But it's just, it's a wonderful thing to kind of activate them yeah, and get them ready yeah. and get your talking points on yeah, cue. A, pr a privilege to We saw recently that. in the media, you know, one false uh, statement or not quite thinking things through yes. can be catastrophic. And yeah, it's not yeah. necessarily the intention they're trying to make. Yeah. And it's all yeah. taken out of context anyway. So yeah. if they can be primed and prepped, like I was before coming here, uh, <laughs> joking, um, we were able to really have that experience with yeah. them. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, so you called yourself a New Yorker, mm. fraud, charlatan, <laughs> you're a Scot. <laughs> I am, I'm originally from Scotland, but I did move to New York 15 years ago. Oh, so so when you hit the 10 okay. year mark, that's you true. get to be a New Yorker. When right? there's charm when people steal your taxi or get in the wrong Uber, <laughs> that's charming to you. When someone says, get out of my effing way, you're like, oh, I love being home. It's a different sensibility. And you were talking about the fact because I was very to the point and very direct at yeah. some point. So I think that happens. We sort of just get through the fluff and get right to the action. Yeah, yeah. Is that where we go wrong in Britain, do you think? We're seeing uh, Well, I think we're seeing it with Someone Brexit. Aren't we? We're visit. Brexit. There's yeah. a lot of waffling and talking back and forth Brexit. rather than let's just do this, let's do this, this mm. is a solution, go. Mm. Uh, it's a different mentality because we're all very, very nervous about offending people yeah. in Britain. And yeah. New Yorkers get out of the door knowing that the intention is to offend. Mm. I once had a client said to me, and she was really irritating people, uh, or she had said something controversial. And I said, are you not frightened that you're pissing people off? And she went, I'm not pissing people off. I'm waking people up. And I thought, what a it's, great mantra it, for it life. Isn't that such a good attitude? Mm -hmm. like, why do we, because obviously, yeah, is that taking the positive? Well, what I've noticed once you go to America and you go to New York, which is a sort of a fierce living, working environment, mm. you, you start sort of apologizing for wanting your space. Mm. Maybe it's because we all live in tiny cubes up in the sky. Mm. We want to claim our territory and that means in claiming our own self-empowerment. Mm. So, you know, whereby here you might be like, oh, could I please get the raise? Do you like me? Am I doing a good job? Do you love me? All that stuff. Mm. You're like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I worth, give me the cash. Mm. You know, there's something really sort of, uh, I found refreshing and energizing about it. So, but I mean, it's a horror show when I go back to Scotland and spend time with my family because they mm. think I'm loud and rude and I'm just me, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway. Loud and rude. Loud and rude. <laughs> when a celebrity has you in their room. Mm. Would it normally be that, like a hotel room or a prep room? Normally, it depends. Depends on the occasion. Mm -hmm. So uh, on award show day, uh, they all sort of congregate at the same hotels, sure. right? So they're always at, now they're at the Waldorf in LA or at the Hilton, etc. Mm. And so I'll go to the hotel room and it's always kind of nervous when you've never worked with someone before. Yeah. Not that I'm nervous that I'm going to make a mistake or what they'll be like, but I'm often thinking, will my industry school's auction machine, will it switch on? Where's the plug? Is the cable long enough? Did I remember the applicator? Do I have the skincare? Where are the serums? Have I run and out of oxygen? That's panicking. Have I run out of oxygen? Exactly. <laughs> Am I going to put different gases near them? And um, and that depends what I ate the night before. And so it's always a problem. So I get in the room, I think, okay, where am I going to do this? Lie down and often tack on the reverse side on the hotel bed, mm. either me or my knees sometimes, 
which you know they're quite like mm. or sitting on some sort of cushiony <laughs> thing to do or a chair to is there anything you do to particularly make them feel special and plumped up or is it just not i just say i'm here you're welcome oh. yeah no i'm joking um i mean i do a couple of things uh primarily i'm you know giving them the interstitial oxygen facial yeah. which is what they're obsessed with mm. and that gives an immediate glow of radiance to the skin i mean it gives them the 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 look that they've slept for 10 hours when they haven't slept in 10 years right <laughs> and so that's always really good mm. i have have sort of little add-ons that I use sort of lip masks and eye masks mm. I use a little device from Foreo uh, which is uh, called the iris it looks a little bit like a sex toy from Ann Summers <laughs> and it's got the sort of nimble patina of a sort of uh, pan Asian hand mm. and it goes like so to get the lymphatic drainage yeah, so I'll yeah. put that into the kit sometimes I'll bring a little bit of LED with me in the mm -hmm. treatment protocol but there's nothing I'm really bringing to sort of ground them or anchor no. them because did you do that because I well thank you you're very <laughs> kind but it's almost like it's the less stuff the better yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I yeah. and I don't often have the time yeah. to bring about something. You know, ideally yeah. I'd like an hour with you, but I very rarely get more than thirty minutes. Mm. You know, mm. and ten minutes of that yeah. is catching up and having conversation, and then let's go, boom. Yeah. So you do quite an amazing massage with your treatment, don't you? I do. Hands. I do. Well, I'm glad that you remembered. You know, it's so funny because when I looked at the facial protocol that we had. I realized that we were doing this wonderful lymph drainage. Mm. We were giving visible contouring and sort of re-architecting the, the mainframe of the face. So lifting the brow, mm. anchoring up the cheek, pulling it back, fluffing the lips. Uh, but when we were finishing it with the sealing of products, which we can talk about where you layer different molecular weights of hydration within the skin, I thought, okay, we're putting it on and it's doing the work. But also there's something about having a, a human skin to skin contact mm. that Unless you finish it that way, it almost feels like they don't feel like they understand what they got. Yes. And so it grounds them, it sort of um, yeah. activates their sensibility to engage, mm. which I think is a, a kind of a psychologically an interesting thing to happen. Yeah. Of course, as soon as you lay your hands or even a device on somebody, it's literally like you've got a, like a gun against them because you start spilling all their secrets. <laughs> and they just don't hold back. <laughs> It's, it's, it's fascinating. You're very guarded. Sometimes clients are very guarded in the beginning, mm. certainly when I'm getting to know them. And then I'll say, and all of a sudden they're telling you something. You're like, whoa. Yeah. You know I just met you 10 minutes it's ago. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting to see that. That, that happened. Like that, and yeah. that creates the connection. Yeah. Because there is something about that intimate space of security and comfort and care that makes somebody feel very secure in their ability to mm. be open with you. Yeah. And also, you now know, know something they don't want. If they don't know, <laughs> so you can hold them to ransom. Yeah, yeah absolutely. perfect. <laughs> As um, I love it. And so, um, with the facial, mm. what what aspect do you think is the most like, most magical part of the treatment? That that if it didn't happen, it. Would, I mean, obviously. It's... Yeah, I think what's interesting about Interceuticals as a brand is that you know it's probably only a brand in the world that's made dehydration its primary focus mm. you know we know at this day and age we're all lifting it filling it pulling it frying it punching it stabbing it right <laughs> so that it has a wound to heal protocol so we look mm. like beast before we become beauty right <laughs> so that's what we're doing but unless you hydrate and change the sort of glowy texture of the skin mm. you're not going to look that much younger when i walk up and down mayfair or park avenue or rodeo drive i see these gorgeous wonderful octogenarians head to toe in chanel Mm. you know looking the part having the most overt facelift you've ever seen the mm. big lobes and the seashell earrings and the whole vibe mm. and the softer skin but mm. my granny has soft skin so it's not about having soft skin anymore it's mm. what can we do that makes us telegraph not even younger I think y the idea of youth is a byproduct of looking energized and looking um, uh, what would you say looking like health yeah. health and wellness right. yes. you know yeah. and so that's what i think to to understand that dehydration is the primary cause of the first lines of visible aging mm. is something that's a mantra for the brand and also a personal philosophy that i think is sort of undervalued mm. and so with the treatment itself it's really the serums that i use yeah. that are doing the busy work oxygen is a gas you know it cannot mm. penetrate the skin mm. unless we create a wound or a puncture and i don't go running around the swiss army knife so that's not the intention right so <laughs> So, but what we can do with it, oxygen is antibacterial, mm. anti-inflammatory, so we can use it to cool and calm and soothe the skin mm. and we also sort of destroy those blackheads within the, in the pore. And we use is about pushing our serums deeper than they would topically go. 
So we work with, and I work with, all my celebrity clients begin with, the Rejuvenate Collection. Yeah. It's super kind, super clean, no contraindications, it's great. So you can be a drug addict, you can be pregnant, you can do have a lot of problems you don't even need to know about, and I'm not worried it's gonna affect you. Mm. Uh, we use aloe vera, green tea, vitamins A, C, and E yeah. uh, to be pushed into the epidermal layer. But what we're doing is we're opening, I like to call it a hydration bank account. So if I'm a godparent and here's a little child, you're born, okay, here's my big deposit. So this is getting you on the road to Harvard, right? <laughs> okay, but what's the point if you Not don't Cambridge. keep putting it up and up and up so mm -hmm. I can actually afford at least one year of school on your dime? So I do this. I open the hydration bank account of the skin. I reacclimate your ability to recognize and retain moisture. And then I continue with the skincare to do hydration deposits to keep you, what I say, solvent. Mm. Okay? <laughs> and I think once you can visually describe what's happening, yeah. people sort of get an idea of what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, I talk yeah. about, oh, here's the ingredient deck. They're like, I don't know. And it's an oxygen facial. But I say oxygen is simply a delivery system. It's really a hyaluronic acid hydration yeah. facial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just read a study that 10 minutes on our iPhone when it's like full gusto mm. is about the equivalent of 30 minutes in the Bahamas without SPF in terms of the moisture that we lose. Really? So yeah. it's kind of shocking. And then Mother Nature is also a little bitch because she's got <laughs> the sunlight, which takes it from us, obviously. She's got the free radicals and she's mm. got the pollutants. So by binding everything in place, we're defending you against losing your moisture and your hydration. Mm. And we're not allowing these outside nasties to come close to us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the age of the client mm. that you see is quite broad, isn't it? Yeah, my eldest client, uh, she won't mind saying, is Susan Sarandon, who's mm. 72. <gasps> is she really? Yeah. Oh my god. I know every time I look at her, I think you lied about your age since you were to, to look better than you are, yeah. you know? To say I'm actually, she probably got really 55, but she looks like she's in her sort of wow. early mid 50s. Yeah. Um, so, but here's the deal dehydration affects us at all parts yeah. of our life. Yeah. When we're very young or yeah. we're very old, the lifestyle we're living, we never stop. Mm. We're always, always, always on the go. We're always on our phones. We're always worrying about everything that's coming. And all of a sudden you have tech neck and you can't move, mm. you know? And I think when you address hydration levels within the skin, you really do bring about vitality and sort of, I, see, I was going to say joy, but mm. I think you're rubbing off on me, <laughs> um, to the complexion. Yeah. And that makes such a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got Paul's Lash? No, these aren't. These are Revitalash. <laughs> oh, I'm giving cute. away my secrets because everyone goes, are those real? Mm -hmm. Do you use anything? No, but I do. <laughs> I use do. Revitalash. I've yes. used it every night for about God, they're pretty. a month. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. And actually, a good tip for guys, mm. if you do want to maximize your lashes, which already genetically we have better lashes than women, <laughs> is the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. If you want to oh, go... Yeah forward and, mm. and put a little bit of oomph to it without looking like you're wearing it, yeah, it's yeah. the best product. That's a good tip. I yeah. Like and it's funny because you're about the fourth person today to ask me about my eyelashes yeah. and I've got this code of conduct. If I'm not using a product or wearing a fragrance that gets an immediate compliment, <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> One of the things about when you're funny that you talk about my lashes and that's really a result of being consistent with using a gross serum. Mm. But I think in life when we're consistent with things and it's very difficult with our schedules to always commit to something, mm. but when you are consistent, small and little often will bring about a sizable difference. Mm. That's why, you know, when you do finish a long day of work, wash your face yeah. and please wash your face properly. Mm. Mm. I'm sort of not quite so hardcore about it as Carolyn Hirons is, <laughs> but I do think Oop. a good double, exactly. Uh, what does she know? Um, I do think a double cleanse is really important. Mm. And I do think that once you get the skin really clean, it can receive these gorgeous actives to actually go where they need to go and do the work. Mm. But it's like going to the gym. You know, if I go, I mean, six days a week is ideal, three days a week, I will see a change. Mm. If I go once a month or the day after Christmas and the day before a holiday, you're not gonna see anything. So I think consistency with skincare, with anything that you want to do to make yourself yeah. more attractive is key. And also the most religious thing we should be committed to is SPF. Yes. What's the last thing you used on a celebrity's face? The last thing I used? My hands. <laughs> God, that was too easy. I hope you love him too. I hope you learned Rather something. I'm mean, partial to this young man. <laughs> young oh, man. I love you. Young man. And can we just talk? Because <laughs> I was going through a really hard time in my life. I actually almost died in December when I was choking in a bit of cheap steak in a cheap restaurant in Florida. <laughs> and as I'm choking and asphyxiate, I'm thinking, Tampa? I'm going to die in Tampa? <laughs> anyway, you were so kind and you sent me the most 
gorgeous candle from your collection Aww. that just I think it was the mojo you sent me and yes, it was it just was. so vibrating energizing centering Aww. kind and calm Thank I cannot you. tell you what it did in terms of just not feeling like emotional wreck as a consequence of that Aww. so I'm so proud of what you've done and Thank everybody you. should really smell these candles and you know put it part of their therapy so my yes. therapist room would have them in it just okay say. well you know get, get that room sorted soon exactly be good. okay Pat, oh, thank he you was for not having say me that. No. Mm -hmm. take care see you soon check him out bye bye and check him out on IGTV too Ooh. Mm -hmm. thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share the love and do visit my lifestyle website jojibliving.com where you'll find our candles and blog and more exciting things to come. The link is below.